This is going to be your foolproof breakdown and guide of upper body training. My goal with this video is just to really help you guys understand the bones, understand the basics of all the upper body muscles, what they work, how you can structure your exercise days around them, differences between our pull and push days, just simplifying everything because I know in the fitness space now more than ever, it's getting extra confusing. There's so many people in the fitness space, which I think is amazing. I think it's awesome to have a diverse group of people sharing their journey, sharing their stories, but with that can come a lot of misinformation, there can be confusion, and there can be a lot of nuances with what worked for someone, not working for you, and hearing people have conflicting viewpoints, and it can just make this whole thing feel super confusing. I am here to break it down for you guys to the bare bones, to the science, to the muscle groups, to the exercises that work those muscle groups so that then you guys can have all of this in your toolbox. You have all of this in your mind and then you can make the right split and the right workouts for you. A lot of people look at the finished product, so they look at someone's routine, they look at the exercises someone's doing, but they don't look into the deeper dive of what muscle is this even working? Why is this in the routine? And so this video should put everything into perspective for you guys and really help you guys out with learning something. And if you guys are super duper beginner, this video is great that you caught it early because I know for me, I had to backwards learn. So I started training upper body. I had no idea what the heck I was doing. I was just doing it. I didn't know what muscles I was working on each day. I didn't have an organized flow. And then I had to backwards learn push versus pull exercises on each day. This video is perfect for you if you're a beginner because you're learning everything right now and you can always refer back to this. All of the information today is jam-packed on this little sticky note that I created while I ate my lunch because it's kind of a spur of the moment video. This always works for me whenever I randomly have an idea and want to film it. So to stay on track, I'll be staying on the sticky because you guys know I get all over the place. I'm a big word vomiter. I just talk, 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 but I want to stay on track today so that this isn't an hour long. So to begin, I really just want to talk to you guys about upper body, why we train it, the importance of upper body. I want to talk to you guys about the muscle groups involved in upper body, all the things. So let's start with that. Our most commonly trained muscles are going to be our chest, our shoulders, our biceps here in the front, their antagonist, our triceps here, as well as our back, which has our rear delts, our traps, all the things, but we're just going to call that back to keep it nice and simple. So you're probably wondering, why should I train my upper body? What is the benefit? Number one, we need to be well-rounded. It is 2023, ladies. I know that we have been told and told and told we shouldn't look bulky, we shouldn't get big, we shouldn't train heavy weights, and we shouldn't be working our upper body. I don't know who came up with that, and I don't know why we all just went with it, but we did for the longest time. But I'm happy that everyone is learning that it's important to train our upper body. It's important to have upper body strength for everything daily life if you're picking up your kid. Having shoulder stability, shoulder strength is going to be so important especially as we age and so ensuring that we know how to properly move our bodies, move our muscles, and strengthen our arms, our back, our chest. It's all super important for us. Additionally, if you're already weight training and you're not really in your beginner stages, your upper body is extremely important because when we're doing our full body lifts, when we're doing our deadlifts, our barbell squats, our barbell RDLs, when we're starting to get super heavy, our arms are working. Our arms are recruited in that. Our back is recruited in that. Everything matters. And so if we have this muscular imbalance where the bottom of our bodies are so, so strong and then our upper body can't keep up, that is a problem. And so it's really important not only for the physical appearance of our bodies to look proportional, but also just in general for everyday strength, for everyday movement, that we have the strength to do the things that we need to do. But a lot of us are here to obviously make our bodies look good. We want to feel our best. We want to look our best. And so training our upper body has a really big impact in how the rest of our body looks. It's important to look proportional. And for my girlies who are trying to have that snatched waist effect, that slim thick effect, you will save yourself so much time when you realize if I can make this bigger and this bigger, this looks smaller. It's all an illusion. So training our back, training our shoulders, Everything is going to be super important in helping to build that dream physique we're looking for alongside being strong, being able to do our daily things. And I quickly want to touch on the whole getting bulky thing because that was something that I really did believe when I first started training. I literally told my brother, I was like, I'm not touching upper body. I don't want to get big. I don't want to get bulky. That phenomenon and that idea, I just want you guys to erase that from your mind. Don't think I'm going to look like a man. Don't think I'm going to look bulky if I train upper body. When I tell you guys, it takes so much work, hard work, hard effort, heavy weights, tons and tons of time, it would take so, so much for you to get bulky. Getting bulky is something that is intentional. It's something that somebody does because they're training extremely hard to get to that point of muscular growth. We are not men. 
we don't have the same anatomy as men. We don't have the same hormones as men. We are not going to look like a man. And even if a woman has larger muscles, she doesn't look like a man. She looks like a strong ass woman, okay? Stop being afraid of upper body. Training your upper body is going to help you so much in your physique. It's gonna help you so much in your daily life and it's going to make your body proportional in strength and in size. Now that we have talked about what your upper body is and a quick overview of the muscles, I wanna dive a little bit deeper into push versus pull, which is something you're gonna hear so, so much when you hear upper body day. I wanna just break it down for you guys because I remember hearing this for the longest and just pretending to know what it meant because I didn't wanna question it and then realizing I literally didn't know what it meant. I didn't know what was categorized in both and I didn't understand why I was even doing it. And I think it's important to know why you're doing something to decide if you wanna continue that or if something might be better suited to you. So. Let's start off, what is push, what is freaking pull? In a very zoomed out sense, they are how they sound. Push is mainly going to be our pushing, pressing movements, and pull is mainly gonna be our pulling movements, which makes sense, but it still doesn't click for me and for a lot of people to know, okay, this is push and this is pull, so this is what I'm working. That's where I was not getting it, and that's where this video is gonna help you guys. This would be the one thing I would tell you guys, memorize it. Like, I know it's not school, I know we're not in a lesson right now, but this would be the one thing, just memorize it and it will help you a ton. Push is all of our pushing movements, our pushing, pressing movements. So what that means is it's going to be our chest movements, our shoulder movements, and our tricep movements. Pull day is going to be all the pulling movements, yes, which means it's going to mainly be our back and our bicep movements. I want to just say it's the same thing as leg days where it doesn't mean just because you're doing a movement that it's only working that exact muscle group. There are so many movements that we are going to do that are going to work several muscle groups. The same way a squat doesn't just work the quads, there's going to be bent over rows and pull downs and pull ups where we're not just working one exact isolated muscle group but we're just categorizing it as that being the main muscle group worked. And like I said, push-pull split training is super popular. It's something that I have done for a really long time. It's something that I give a lot of clients, and it's probably something that you see a ton. And the reason is pretty simple. It really is easy to group things in a certain way and stick with them. It's easy to stick with all of your pressing movements on one day and your pulling movements on another day. But I wanna let you guys know that just because that's a popular way to train doesn't mean it's the only way to train. And that's where it comes in where you have to see what someone's doing and maybe take inspiration, but know that that's not the only way. Push and pull days are great because it's kind of just like two separate days and it keeps the muscles organized, but you guys can still do different day things for upper body. For example, I have done push and pull like my whole life. I was getting super bored with it. I was honestly just like, I don't really want to group my muscles this way. I want to do things differently. So I started doing a back and shoulder day because a really big goal of mine is to grow my hourglass figure, to grow my back, to get this more snatched illusion, which means I want to build my shoulders. I want to widen and build my back. So those are my priorities. So instead of doing a push and pull split, I instead did back and shoulders, and then I also did just a full upper body day with the rest of the movements. Another thing that I have done in the past has been chest and back. So I would do some of my chest movements and then I would go into some of my back movements as well. So don't feel restricted in what you can do by feeling like I can only do pull on this day and I can only do push on this day. Everything can intermix. You can do just two full upper body days. You can pick muscle groups you love. If there's a certain exercise or group that you don't care that much for, you don't have to do it. Like I only personally do one bicep move and one tricep move every single week. That's it. Some people love biceps and triceps and want to do like four exercises for them. So it's all about finding your split, your thing that works for you, which is why I want you guys to just understand what exercises go with which muscles so you can make that decision. So that's what we're happening in right now. Alrighty, we're going to start with breaking down the push day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you guys through the muscle groups that are in it what exercise patterns and exercises work those muscle groups. So just as a reminder, a little quiz for your brain, do you remember what a push day is? It's our chest, our shoulders, and our triceps. So those are gonna be the muscle groups associated with push. So when I break that down even further, we're gonna start with just our chest. Our chests are 
our lovely muscles right in here. Chest movements, there are a good amount, but what I'm gonna do to simplify it is really just break it down into two categories for chest. For chest, we have our pressing movements and we have our flies. And I think breaking things down like this will help you guys a lot when it comes to your training. So first, our pressing movements. We have our bench press. We can do this with a barbell or we can just do dumbbell presses. We can do dumbbell presses on a bench going like this. You can do neutral grip presses coming in like this. We can do incline dumbbell presses with the bench at an incline. There's so many different pressing variations. There's also machines at the gym that you can use that will do pressing movements as well. So just keeping in mind, pressing movements are a main category under chest. Typically, I would recommend choosing one to two pressing movements per upper body workout because we don't wanna get redundant the same way with our glute days. We don't wanna get redundant doing two lengthening exercises in the same workout. Then we have our fly variations. Flying is kind of how it sounds. We're coming out into a flying motion, coming back in. That's gonna work into our chest again and it's just gonna work a little different part of our chest, a little bit more of an isolation movement so you're not going extremely heavy the way that you might be on our pressing movements for the chest. Our fly movements, usually there's just three main methods to do this. There's gonna be our cable flies, they're going to be our dumbbell flies, and then they're gonna be our machine flies where you can be on the machine and flying in. Same thing with these. Truthfully, I would only have you guys probably do one in a workout because it does get redundant, but maybe you're doing a low to high fly and a neutral fly or a low to high fly and a single arm fly. So yes, there are reasons that you could be doing more than one in a workout, but I would say for the average person, for the beginner, you can stick to one fly variation in your push day or in any upper body day. And that is it for our chest. And now we're gonna move into our next big muscle group for our push day, which is going to be our shoulders. Our shoulders are gonna be the same thing. We're gonna have two main movers or main patterns that we do when we're training our shoulders. The first one is going to be are pressing movements again. With this, you're gonna be thinking overhead press, my shoulders always click when I do that, are shoulder presses, anything pressing related is what we're gonna be doing to work those shoulders. Maybe a single arm isolation press, but overall anything overhead, anything pressing, is gonna be working those shoulders. Again, they're not fully isolating just shoulders, but they're mainly gonna work those shoulders. So that is something that I would say, again, probably just picking one for a workout and trying to load it pretty heavy is gonna be better than just doing all three variations in one. Then our other type of shoulder movement and pattern that we usually do is a raise variation. And this is probably what you guys see a lot. So these can be our lateral raises, they can be our front raises, any type of raise, maybe we're going into a Y raise, all of these different things are going to fall into the raise category of our shoulder working days. And these again, I'd say like one to two, even one to three, because with our raise movements, it's very similar to our flies. We're not doing these very heavy. They're more of an isolator that we're gonna put more towards the end of our workout, which I will touch on that, so don't worry. But main things to note here, shoulders, we have our pressing overhead movements, and we have our raising movements, whatever plane of motion they're in. And then lastly, we have our triceps, which these movements are pretty straightforward. They're gonna be anything where we're coming into extension. And for our triceps, the main thing I want you guys to think about, the main movement pattern is going to be coming into extension. And that might look different in different places but overall we're coming into extension. So also what this means, coming into tricep extension means we're here, our arm is coming straight fully extended and we can see that the triceps fire here. So what we're gonna be working to get to full tricep extension is going to be maybe a cable pull down where we're pulling down and out, flaring here at the bottom, really working those triceps. Maybe we are doing an overhead extension with a dumbbell. Usually this is where a lot of beginners start out because it's comfortable and it's easy to bring a dumbbell in a corner and try it out. Maybe we're doing a school crusher where we're laying on our back. We have a bar and we're coming into extension here or a single arm coming into extension here. Or maybe we're doing a dip variation where we're, our arms are back on a bench we're dipping down, we're extending up. We're dipping down, we're extending up. No matter what, the main movement pattern is that we're coming into a straight arm extension to work these triceps. And the main thing I wanna say about this is to ensure that you're getting the most out of your tricep work, ensuring to even add a little baby pause at the end range for full extension, and ensuring that that muscle is working will be super beneficial. And that is it for our push day. And just to recap everything for push day so you guys don't feel overwhelmed. Chest, we're gonna break it up into two main things, our pressing movements and our fly movements. Shoulders, two main things, our pressing overhead movements and our raising movements. Triceps, just one main movement pattern, which is extension in any plane. 
Hopefully this helped to simplify things for you and also tell you guys what exercises go with what and kind of have you have a better understanding and basis. When it comes to building a push day, I'm not going to dive too deep into that today. I highly recommend you guys watch my week of workout videos or any other push day video that I have on my page and I'll try to link those down below for you so you can see kind of what I do. But the main point of this video isn't just to show you what I do and have you do it. I also want you guys to feel like you've learned and could do this and kind of make a recipe for yourself. The same thing goes for upper body. Our most exhausting movements, our heaviest loaded movements are going to come to the beginning of our workout. So when I said pressing movements, I want those at the beginning. That would be our heavily loaded bench press, overhead press, shoulder press, dumbbell presses. Those come at the beginning because they're the most tiring and we want to make sure that our arms are super nice and ready for that instead of doing them at the end where we might be under a lot of fatigue. Then we'll get into our isolation movements. So we're getting into our triceps, into our raises, into our flies where we're not loading them as heavy but we are still incorporating them. And that is our push day. Like I said, these movements don't all have to be on a push day. You can put them in a full upper body day, whatever it may be. But that is just how they're typically categorized. So if you want to do a push and pull split, that's how you would have your push day with those movement patterns and those muscle groups. If you want to add a push day but don't know what exercises to do, this video is for you. Starting off with chest, we have our pressing variations. We can do neutral grip press, normal press, incline press, or bench press. Then we're moving into our fly variations, which can be done on the machine here, on the cables, as well as laying flat with dumbbells. Now for the shoulders, we also have our pressing movements. So we have dumbbell press, single arm presses, overhead presses, etc. And then we have our raise variations, front raises and lateral raises. For our triceps, we're going to work through tricep extension. So anything on the cables, dips, skull crushers, overhead extension, etc. And now we hop into, honestly, my favorite workout day, mainly because I love training my back now, which is going to be our pull day. And so our pull day is just going to be two main muscle groups, our back and our biceps. And with this, our back is going to have the most movement patterns. There's a lot of different things that we can do to hit our back. And so this will be one, try to pay attention, but overall it will make sense as you just see the exercises come on the screen as I talk about them. So for our back, the main movement pattern and the main thing you'll see in a lot of training is going to be row variations. Row variations encompass so much of the back and are things that I love to have programmed for my clients. I usually program a client at least two row variations in a day sometimes upwards of four to five in my workouts just because of how much I love rowing in different planes and how much they're great for building and isolating the back and the lats. For our rowing movements let me just walk you through some there's so many more things that I'm probably naming today by the way so don't feel like this is an all-inclusive list but first we have our bent over row so we're coming and rowing from down to up bent over row we have our seated cable row we can do these single arm we can do these with two arms we can do them with wide grip there's so many different options there we have our high to low rows so maybe single arm high to low rowing we have our gorilla rows where we're using two kettlebells and it's more of a functional movement so many fun little rows they have our seated rows with a chest support there's so many options so the main thing i'm trying to say is any row variation is going to fall under the back category nine times out of the ten and those are a bunch of different variations i personally like to choose different planes of motion so i'm not going to do like two to three bent over row variations but maybe i'll do one bent over row variation whether it's a single arm bent over row both arms with the barbell or the gorilla row i'll pick one and i'll do that one then i'll do another row variation maybe that's from the seated plane where i'm pulling towards belly button that'll be my other variation for row so try to work in different planes and not do things that feel redundant or the same but it's nice that with pull day there are other options so you're not stuck with just doing barbell bent over row every single week because it can get a little boring I must say. Then some other categories that we have for the back. We're going to have our pull up variations and these are exactly how they sound. Literal pull ups. So doing a pull up whether that's assisted on a machine, assisted with a band or not assisted or even weighted depending on where you're at in that spectrum. All of those are still pull up variations. We also have things like inverted rows or I've seen them be called Australian pull ups as well where we have the barbell we're pulling up from there but our body weight is still somewhat on the floor. Anything that we're pulling our body up is going to be a pull movement which does make sense overall. So hopefully that helps you click if you just think pull up means back that's going to come on a pull day which means back is on the pull day that might help you to memorize things as well then with that we also have pull down variations so we have a lat pull down is the main one and there's so many ways to do lat pull downs we can do close grip we can do wide grip we can go underhand we can go neutral grip depending on the different presses we can use the mag grip so many different options when it comes to pulling down 
the main thing is that we are pulling down. And then lastly, we also have deadlifts, which I wanted to pop in here because this is something that I personally put on a pull day, but it's not something you have to have on this day. This can go on a leg day. Deadlifts are a main compound movement, which means we're working upper body, we're working lower body, we're working everything when we're doing a deadlift, which is what I wanted to remind you guys when I said upper body strength is important for those main movements. But I popped it on here because I personally do my deadlifts on a pull day and it's a pulling movement there. So just so you know, you can do conventional, you can do sumo, even some RDLs and stiff leg deadlifts, things like that can technically be considered pull. Typically people are putting them on a leg day, which is totally fine, but if you feel like your leg days are bogged down, which is how I feel doing hip thrusts and squats already, I just like to let deadlifts have their own little day. Same thing goes here, heavier loaded movements are gonna come first, so if you are deadlifting on your pull day, do that first. If you're doing a heavy barbell bent over row on your pull day, do that first. If you want to really work towards your lat pull down strength, you might want to do that first as well. So just being smart about prioritization of what you put first versus last, keeping those main isolators at the end. And also I forgot to mention rear delts are also going to come a little bit more on pull days sometimes. It could also go on push day. It's kind of like one of those floaters. So things like our face pulls, our rear delt cable pull aparts, anything where we're kind of isolating those rear delts can go on either day. And last but not least, we are hitting our biceps. I don't personally train biceps super heavy, but there are so many options when it comes to biceps. But the main movement pattern that I want you guys to know and think of when you do biceps is it's a curl. It is the opposite or antagonist muscle to our triceps. So here's a tricep, here's our bicep. So when we're working the tricep, like I told you guys, full extension here is working the tricep. So that means the opposite or the antagonist of that is going to be a full arm curl here is gonna work our biceps. So hopefully that makes sense for you guys in the scientific and anatomy way. When we wanna contract our bicep muscles, this shortened range of motion here at the end is where our biceps are working the most, which means you may wanna focus on that little squeeze at the top being the main emphasis when you're training them. And when it comes to biceps, like I said, so many options, I'm gonna miss a lot, so don't take all of this as all-inclusive. We have our normal curls, we have hammer curls, across the chest curls, cable curls, preacher curls. There's so many options. You guys can do 21s for burning out. You can use easy bar, barbell. There's so many freaking options for the biceps. So pick a few if you like to do biceps a lot or just pick one if you're not as big of a fan but wanna be well-rounded and you'll be all good to go when it comes to the bicep department. And with all that said, we have covered all the muscle groups, we've covered push day, we've covered pull day, and just to remind you, just because the muscle groups are usually laid out in that fashion, doesn't mean it's a bad thing to mix and match based on your goals and your preferences. So understand the basics, understand the bones, and then you can go ahead and you can go and make something that you feel is best suited for you. If you wanna do a pull day but aren't sure what exercises to do, this video is for you. Firstly, we have our pull-up variations. These are going to be any assisted pull-up, normal pull-up, or any inverted row. Then we have our pull-down movements, lat pull-down, single arm lat pull-down, push-downs, etc. Then all of our deadlift variations are technically pull and can go on these days as well. Then we have all of our row variations. We have bent over, seated cable, high to low, single arm dumbbell, gorilla, tons of options with rowing. And then for our biceps, any curl variation is going to work those. So I hope this helps you guys. I hope this helped you guys. I hope you guys learned something from this. And I hope that this helped to simplify so much information that you see. I think a lot of people put out content assuming that you guys know everything. And it's okay not to know everything. I didn't know everything at the beginning. And I didn't really have or see a video on my YouTube feed or online that really kind of encompassed everything all in one so I could just save it and refer to it. So I hope that this can be that video for you guys. I'm also planning on making some sort of graphic and reels on my Instagram that you guys can save as well for a little easier access as well. Please be sure to comment if there was something I missed, if you guys have any questions, and also be sure to do your own research. I think it's super important that you just don't take one person's words with a grain of salt sometimes i misspeak sometimes i don't know everything and so it's really important that even though i'm giving you guys this information you can also look elsewhere and just grow your brain because i do the same thing i watch so many videos and try to always keep learning because there's so much to learn when it comes to the human body but i hope this helped you guys out i hope that this simplified things instead of overcomplicating things and actually gave you tangible knowledge that you can work with to actually create something for yourself long lasting and yeah like I said, I'm very proud of you guys. I know that training upper body can seem daunting, but I do think as you start to do it, you'll feel a lot more comfortable. I wanna remind you guys, take up space in the weight room. You belong there and everyone is just trying to get stronger and better in every single way. If you guys feel like you need more support, if you feel overwhelmed and you wanna coach, I do that as well. I do 
one-on-one -on -one coaching and I also do personalized programs which are a cheaper option to one-on-one -on -one coaching and kind of like I like to tell people it's your version of a influencer guide that you would buy if you went to someone's page and they were selling a six-week guide except that guide is going to be 100% catered to you your schedule and your goals so it's kind of a more personalized approach to that but that is everything for this video please be sure to like if you liked the video comment subscribe for a lot more content like this let me know if you guys have more requests if you have questions and i'm more than happy to help you guys out but thank you guys for watching i love you guys so much and i'll see you guys in my next video bye